Hello, I'm Norm Davey. I'm the president of Exceptional Computer Services. Back in 1979, I started learning how to program. I went to Simon Fraser University and took a course on how to use the Commodore SuperPet. And the programming language? APL. It was an absolutely horrendous computing language. It used the Greek character set, but I was hooked. I had to continue programming. By 1981, I was being paid to write programs for the Apple II. Recently, I acquired an Apple II Plus, and that itch for programming it was there. It needed to be scratched. We are going to learn together how to program the 6502. Now, at that time, back in 1981, I wrote most of my programs in Assembler. However, that's over 35 years ago, so I'm trying to remember how to do it. Together we will learn and we'll write a simple game. Actually, it'll be fantastic compared to any game in 1974. But no, <laughs> this is going to be a very simple game. It'll teach you how to get keyboard input, how to set up graphics, and how to do sound. Beyond that, there are no guarantees. Let's get started. Okay, hopefully you've set up your emulator. You have uh, the Merlin disk in drive one and your blank disk, or which I've called tutorial, in disk two. So let's uh, restart the machine. Oh, I should take, take note. Make sure that we are running an enhanced Apple IIe we're using uh, color with TV emulation and let's switch to authentic speed we have a emulated joystick using the keyboard we have uh, enabled mocking board no we let's not have any sound cards in disk will use the enhanced speed and there's nothing to change in the advanced settings. Okay, let's restart our computer. Okay, so now we're in Merlin. Remember we want to switch to drive 2. I frequently forget to do this. Anyway, switch to drive 2. Let's do a catalog. Oh, we don't have any examples on our machine. We just have a blank disk. Boy, we're going to have to type in all that source. Or maybe not. What we can do is use CiderPress. I'm going to open up my disk, the tutorial disk. And I'm going to add files to it. I'm going to look for my extract directory. And we have this funny file that uh, was saved earlier called example1.s. If I say Except it's going to add it to the disk. So now when I do a catalog, maybe I need to switch drives. And we need to click Cider Press. Maybe I need to reset. Switch to drive 2, do a catalog. Ah, there we go. Example 1.s. So that's the load the source. Example 1. Don't need to put the extension in. And now when we list, we have all our source typed in for us. Isn't that nice? Now, 
what if we wanted to print out this source? Well, what we can do is go and write the text file. Now, if you look here, it says example one, and it has a question mark. You have to say why if you want it to actually write the file. If you press enter, it does nothing. The catalog creates a file called t.example1. Now, going back into CiderPress and opening our disk drive, we can take our extracted file, or take our file that's on the drive, and we can extract it. And we do that by clicking on this file. We want it to auto detect and convert the file to text. We want it to strip the high bit, and probably we want to add the extension type. It's going to extract it into our directory called extract. So now this is the file that it has generated. I believe this number here is actually the permissions associated with the file. But when we open it, there we go. We've got our text file in a form that we can print. And that's just wonderful. So let's press E and go into our editor. If you want to list a section of file, you can choose a range with a comma in between. This is telling uh, ORG says the origin. It says where we're going to store our program when it's assembled. These would be the equivalent of variables in a high-level language. Basically, it says HDR is equal to this memory address. To assemble a program, type ASM. I always say no when it says update source. And it slowly goes through the process of assembling. Now, do you see this CHK? That is for that's a, an assembly director assembler directive. And it means checksum. It's not actually put into the into memory, but this is the exclusive or of all the bytes that were generated before it. This way you can check to see whether or not you've typed in your assembly code correctly. So let's now that we've assembled it. No, it seems kind of slow when you're doing this one. It's really, oh, it's painfully slow. What you can do is go into here and go into the configuration page and select the custom speed. Let's go up to fastest. Now when we assemble, uh, you can't even tell that it's uh, done its work. It's happened so fast. Just remember that when we're dealing with sound and you're running at full speed, you will not get the right uh, sound. It'll, it'll either hear nothing or it'll sound like garbage. Press Q to click back to the main menu. If we'd done any editing, we'd want to save the source. I'm going to do that anyway. Remember, it's got that question mark there. You've got to press Y in order to save it. Now, the assembled course code is called the object code. So you press O to save that and press Y to save it to the disk. If I press Q, we quit right out of Merlin, but we can get back in if we type ASSEM. Let's do a catalog of our disk. We have a .s is our source file, but it's a binary file. T.example is our text file, and 
example one is our assembled object code. So I'm going to say b run example one. There's our program running, and if I press a key, we exit out of it. But there's something that's interesting. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, text at the bottom, and I'm going to run that uh, example again. Well, look at that. We're mixed text and graphics. We're going to discuss that in our next page, our next tutorial, and we'll see what that's about.